Chris. I'm Dan. We're two guys. One beer and our guest Chris Armis, head coach of Toronto FC. Welcome to the show, Chris. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Chris, uh, for having me. It's good to be uh, with you guys. So, uh, as we always do, we have a pint in hand. I'm uh, drinking the uh, Spitfire British Ale. No, I'm drinking uh, Side Launch Brewing Company's uh, Light IPA. And what you got going on there, Chris? Yeah, we have a little Stella Artois, you know? It's, uh, it's, the, it's the only thing that was in the fridge, so I figure uh, a light beer is a good one. Well, good cheers one to you. Well, cheers to that. Cheers, guys. So let's get straight into it. You've been uh, stuck playing all your games in in, uh, in Florida, all your home games in Florida. Uh, the whole team's down there, obviously, and the coaching staff. And uh, I'm hoping some friends and family are, are also down with you to make life a little easier. What's it been like? Listen, it's... it's um... You know, it, it's it's nice that a lot of players and staff have their families here. It, it you know, we've brought home. I mean, uh, the old home is Toronto, uh, you know, th this theme here. But um, we've brought families to the players and staff. Um, you know, I, I got home to see my family. My, my wife and my two boys will come visit me for a few days at the end of June. But that's, you know, it's... You, you, as much as you try to, uh, you know, make it normal, right? This is our normal. It's still, you know, the, 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 the comfort of, of the guys and, and staff's homes and, and the comfort of home, comfort of Toronto. Yeah, we're going to have to wait a little longer for that, but we've, we've managed in a good way um, really to make no excuses too. like really try to make this comfortable from food to the pitches to you know, uh, the way they've decorated rooms with TFC pillows to certain things that just really try to add some comfort. Because I'll tell you what, you know, for staff, sometimes it's not easy. Um, you know, for me, I feel like I have calluses all over me, like my brain, my body, I'm, I'm a cat, I can take it, you know, but you got to remember that, that a lot of these guys, um, they haven't really been in the real world and real life stuff. Like, and, and imagine some of the young players, yeah. 16, 18, 20, uh, their, their families, their parents, their brothers, their sisters, you know? And so, so for the older players, the, the younger players, it's still such a stressful situation. So my job, you know, at the, at, the, at the head of it, you know, there's, of course, Ali Curtis and Bill Manning, who've done a fantastic job trying to make this comfortable, is really to have a, a little pulse on things, right? To, to not overdo training and video sessions, but still push hard. Like, I have to push hard. Yeah. We're not happy where we're at. So getting that balance right. But it doesn't take much because I'm always... I'm always listening to the sound of training. I hear, I know what enjoyment looks like. I know what pushing looks like. I can see the faces of, Hey coach, come on. It's, it's a little tough or we need a little bit more. So I'm just keeping the pulse on things, having my hand on the pulse on things and trying to get the balance right. But we're, I think there's a little momentum thinking we're going to get out of here soon and get back home to all of you and start kicking some, some ass at home, you know? Uh, we look forward to that day. We're waiting for that day for sure. <laughs> so, so you brought up the young kids, the, the 16, 20, whatever year olds. Um, a, a lot of the talk at the beginning of the season was we were going to see a lot more of them. And, and now they've been loaned down to TFC2. What, what's the plan? Is, are you bringing them back up? Is it the, this is just a temporary situation for them to be down there playing with TFC2 just to get minutes while the other guys are off? on international duty? Yeah, Chris, it's a good question. And, and, and however many folks are listening, you know, you wonder how, ma how many have watched, right? It's nice that we, it's nice even for me, the thought of young players, we're, we're, we're gonna keep pushing that. But we have to, you know, like I also said early on, we have to get a gauge of where the young players are at. Sure. Because the truth of the 
matter is they're inexperienced players at the high level. They are. So there's only one way to find out and there's only one way to gain experience. You need someone to give them those minutes. And I, and I have, I've given minutes. We've given Jaden a start against Vancouver against uh, was it the New York Red Bulls. We brought Jaquille in. These guys have gotten the most minutes in seven games and champions that they have in their entire careers. Were they ready for it? Is this coach willing to do it? But the truth of the matter is, it's, it's like we have this bright young crop of players. Well, how do we really know? You, you know, you have to play them. You have to play them. And now when we've seen them, it's not like, you know, every time you put a guy on the pitch, it's goal after goal or play after play. We've seen it's been invaluable, right? It's so important to get Luke Singh minutes. But you can see it's not easy for Luke Singh, right? The Montreal game, we lose 4-2. It's, we're putting him in tough situations. For Luke, this is really good. For, 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 going, for going down goals, this is not good. For winning games, this is not great sometimes. So I'm going to keep bringing them along. So as guys get healthy, right? Because we have a pretty good team, as you know. As guys get healthy those minutes get tighter to, 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 to give out, right? Yeah. Yeah. So w- you have to, I, Ali Curtis, strategy, we have to get the young players minutes. If they're not getting first team minutes, there's the USL team. Yeah. And that's why those guys are going to get those minutes there sprinkled in as I bring them along with the first team. How, how does that, uh, how does when you loan them to TFC, how does that work? You're allowed to recall them at any time? Oh, yeah. Like there's no, for instance, you know, um, we have uh, last night, uh, Jaquil started with the, with the, the second team. Yeah. Um, a week ago or so, or we, we were all at the stadium watching Jaden and Ralph play in that game. But two days before they're in our training, tomorrow, Jaquil's back in our training. They train with us, play with them, supplement over there. But no, it's, those, are, those are like little four-day – the paperwork sets them up for longer spells, but those are like little, little hits where train with us, play with them, train with us, play with them. We're trying to get that rhythm going. Not – like, for instance, even this upcoming Wednesday, you know, I'm, I'm meeting with Mike Munoz, the, the second-team coach, tonight. I spoke to him earlier. Um, could it be uh, that we get three players for him to play? You know what I'm saying? Three guys, all they miss with us on a Wednesday night is, is training, call it tomorrow and Wednesday, but they gain a game where uniform on, butterflies around, go and put it to work. And hey, if they do really well, right? What they're saying with that performance is, coach, include me in on Saturday. But um, you know, if I if I if I showed you the background here, it, it's wallpaper of of a lot of stuff. You know, it's the roster starts, the, the minutes start getting you know tight. You know, Pozuelo, Osorio back into the team, Marky Delgado, Michael Noble, Okello coming through. You have guys Nick Delion, Subasa. Then you got Dom Dwyer healthy again, right? So it's like whoa, twenty man roster fills up quickly. So um, you were saying as people are getting healthier and stuff like that, obviously the minutes are going to get harder for, for everyone uh, because you have the competition within the team. Some of those young guys are, are pushing some of the bets, I am sure. Um, when do you think you're going to have your best 11? I would think we're going to have our best 11 – my guess is, you know, Soteldo is getting healthy, right? He's, he's not totally there yet. We're, we, he's under our watch right now, meaning our rehabilitation process. And then he's also on Venezuela's Copa America roster. roster. If he gets healthy and, and they're still alive, they can call him in. If he goes in, he goes in. When he gets back, then we start. That's when you say, okay, Pozuelo, Osorio, Soteldo, Michael, Marky Delgado, 
You can talk about little change there. You have Richie Larea, Aro, um, Chris Mavinga, Kamara Lawrence, a striker. Is it Io? Is it Dom Dwyer? Right? Pat Mullins always knocking on the door. Yeah. You know, people underestimate him, but you know, he's always around, right? And then I just named, you know, 12, 13 guys. Pick your 10. You have Quentin, like back, you know, he's he's right there. Like, we, you know, we've, you know, it's, 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 it's been talked, you know, we, 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 we're going to get him going again too. Like Alex Bono, it's each of those guys are pushing each other. I think you're talking two to three weeks, maybe um, three, four weeks. You're seeing us being able to really throw everything at teams and we're, we're getting close now. So Good, good. Cause it seems uh, it's been the uh, year of the thigh injury this year, hasn't it? You've had zero luck. No, <laughs> it, there's been some quads. There's been some hamstrings, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's, it's a little bit of a trend around the world, like with COVID and, you know, the schedule, but the soft tissue injury, man, it's even, you know, for Osorio, just think Osorio, Pozuelo, and Soteldo, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. All the same. And those are big names on the team, right? So those are the guys you want out there. And yeah, guys, like we know it. We know it. Like if you if you take if you take one player out of a team, it's okay. You fill it in. It's, I think it's one. You know, even though it's not like for like, it okay. You, you can. There's enough moving parts still intact. You remove two. You remove three. You remove four, you know, it's, it's just, um, we've taken, we've taken some on the chin there. Halftime of Columbus, Chris Mavink, I, he can't go into the second half. It's like, what, what are we doing? Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, um, we've taken some, we're like, come on, you know, come on. So I think the break has been good. I think it's been good to see Osorio get a string of games yeah. for Canada. It's good. good for Canada. Yeah. He looks really good for Osorio. Good. It's good for TFC, right? He gets a beautiful assist last game. I mean, we want that. So we want, do, you, we want that. do you expect to see the Canadian guys and Mavinga and anyone else? Uh, Zav, they all went on inter international duty. Do you expect to see them for Saturday? For Saturday, or will you, it be like a... The answer is yes. Okay, good. Nice. <laughs> Mavinga lands tonight. He'll be in training tomorrow. Those guys play tomorrow. They'll be back on Wednesday. You know, like if things go really well with Canada, maybe John Herdman's listening to this program. Uh, please, can you spare those guys some minutes so they can play 90 <laughs> minutes on Sunday? <TV? laughs> you know, you know, like um, oh, only if we're winning, Chris. <laughs> healthy, it was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's exactly what I said to Chris earlier today was all I want is for Richie and uh, Jonathan Azario to come back healthy. But I want the win as well. Yes, we want the win. We want well. the win as well. We, we, we have to beat Haiti. We want the win. First and foremost, really, let's be honest, right? Like when, when Canada, we, we want Canada to thrive. We want them to, well, they're going to get through, right? But we want them to make some noise. You know, I'm from the United States. I played for the U.S. national team. And uh, it used to be like this, U.S., Canada. But I'm... I'm home is Toronto right now. My boys are over there, meaning right now, Oso and Richie. Yeah. And, and look, I'm, I've, I've had a lot of contact and, and it's been mutual in terms of the support from Mauro Biello to John Herdman, the Federation of Canada to really be supportive of what they're doing and them of us. Um, we want, we need them to win. We want those guys then to stay healthy and the experiences that those guys get over there, it's incredible. Like I've been there, but it's, it's really um, so valuable for those players. And Eric Zavaleta, I mean, he's gotten three games with the El Salvador, three games, three wins. I mean, we can't take it lightly. It's been good for him, which then ends up being good for us. Right. And he got a goal. So, you know, this, this, it, it just raises, it raises the uh, competition within the team guys. You yeah. Know, you know that. So, uh, Outside of the team, how about personally, uh, how, how, how much are you looking forward to? What are you looking forward to most about coming to Toronto and actually staying here and living here? Because you, you really haven't had much time in the city. No, I haven't had any time. Like, because we were back there, it was quarantine, and then it was 
there was things were shut down, right? So it's go to go to work, go to the, the training ground or BMO and then and then come home. But um, what am I looking forward to most? To be honest with you, what I'm looking forward to is some normalcy for our group. Uh-huh. Um, in that, in that, you know, that, that the normal routine every day, I think will be really good for our guys to get a real comfort of being home in the home cooking type of thing. But I want to be coaching in that building with a house full of, you know, what I had to, what I had to coach against, <laughs> I want to want that on my side, right? Yes, yes. I know we're one, four and two, we've, it's been hard, but I think there's probably some, some people, yeah, like questioning things. I know we're on the right track. I mean, it's been difficult. Um, we're seven games in, but I, I want to, I want to show the supporters. I want to show all of you. Yeah. We have a team that's together. We're going to play fast, energetic football. We're going to play together. We're going to defend and, and, and yeah, like that's, that's an exciting thought for me. Yes. Canada, the city, the, the culture, the people, I want to bring my family there. I'm looking forward to all of that. It's, it's secondary because that's for Chris Armis and his family. But for me, it's about all of you like delivering, you know, so I want to get home and, and, and really, uh, you know, we just have to build some momentum here, get some points. So we, we can start, you know, start that off the right way. And most with a little, you know, we got to make up some ground a little bit, you know? Well, just so you know, yeah, uh, I know I've been uh, messaging you directly and stuff, but just so you know, Chris and I, and there's others like-minded as, as myself and Chris, we've got your back. We're behind you. We know it's there. You can, you can almost sniff it. Yeah. There's, there's there. times where you can feel it. Coming. You, you know, it's there and, and you get your, all the pieces together and, and everyone's healthy again. I, it's, I, I really truly believe once you get your best 11, that uh, the league is going to be worried. We're going to make some noise. We're going to make some noise. You know it. You've seen the group. You know, we're pushing the, the envelope. Um, we're trying to add to the, the work that's been done. But it's a different year. It's a different time. Um, it's a different chemistry within the group. It is. Like, there's there's a Kamara Lawrence. There's some, you know, there's, it's, it's going to be in, in a month or two where it's slightly, you know, you, 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 the chemistry is a little bit different. The demands. We're going to push the envelope. And when it when it gets going, I I'll, I agree with you. First of all, I appreciate that support. Honestly, it means a lot. And I, I do think the, the knowledgeable fan base yourselves, I mean, I think you know what you're looking at. Yeah, every game, no one's blowing us out of the water. We are shooting teams. We're in other teams' buildings. Columbus, we're, we're pushing in the second half. Like, we're right there. We're in the Orlando game. Jacob Schaffelberg, you know, it's – the ball's going into the empty net and there's another chance. And if we scores it, oh yes, we're on the right track. We are on the right track, but it's all about results. We have to get the results and we will. The team is together. The, it's talented, but we have to get the talent out there because then it, it puts us in with the rest. It does. It's in the balance oftentimes. And in a league where almost 70% of all games are one goal or less, yeah, we, we got to have our difference makers out there. Yeah, for sure. And it, it comes down to that when you're when you're trying to put it in. You, you got to have the guys who are making the, the, the pressure at, at both ends of the field, right? So, I mean, that's an important it's, thing. It's, 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 it's the reality, guys. It is. It's NBA. It's hockey. When, you know, you, you can't – you it the listen, we um, – we're going to have other moments of the year and in the future where we miss certain guys, yeah. certain key guys. Hopefully they're not all missing at once. Right. But like we, uh, we have to also be able to dig deep when we are missing players. That's not, it shouldn't be an excuse of why let's say our team as a whole can't defend a certain play, a transition moment across a set piece or this or that, or execute a three V two, just because we don't have so-and-so on the field. Like if we, if we truly are in every game, if we have a good enough roster and we have a good roster, we should be able to get it done, but we have to get some momentum going. We, we have to, um, 
it's it's hard sometimes, right? Like in Orlando, we're playing in their stadium. Orlando, yes, we're in the game. It's 15 minutes in. We're like, oh, we got this. This is they're having a hard time breaking us down. They come down one chance, one goal. It's a little bit demoralizing, right? It is. Um, but that's part of our where we're at as a team, and, and we have to grow. We have to grow. For sure. We see the growth. Yeah. Don't worry. It's happening. Yeah, good. Good. I believe it. So uh, it. on that uh, on that thoughts of, of uh, uh, do, the, do the bosses feel the same? Have, has, has, has it, have the big boys got your, your back as well? Because that's, that's yeah, look, they, I, Yes, they've been – they're supportive, and I think they also – understand the challenges forget about where we are and away from home just you know there's just the most important thing of of who we haven't had on the field yeah. we just haven't had but you can call it your you can call it your front four your front four so if you take anyone's front four out it's like okay so now Scoring first becomes hard. Scoring goals in general comes hard. Keeping possession up the field to relieve pressure becomes harder. So, yeah, like, I mean, my bosses are supportive. They see they're, they're at almost every single training session. They see the work being done. They see that there's the energy and the detail that's, that's talked through and worked out and the, the intensity at which things are being done the buy-in from the players, the commitment from guys, it's at a high level. The demands are high around here and they can see that. So it's not about faking anyone and, and you know, you're not faking, you know, it's a real situation here. So I think they see that, that and, and, and how some of these games have been won or lost or tied that, yeah, that when margins are thin, there's certainly room for all of us, the staff, uh, the performance team, can, are we fit enough? Are we staying healthy? The players to execute in certain moments that together that, yeah, we all, we're all in on it. And I think that's, I think that's clear to them because it does feel like there's, there's support. Yeah, for sure. That's great. That's what we want to hear. Important, right? So we won't keep you much longer. Uh, I will say that uh, we really appreciate you coming on and doing the show with us. For sure. We can't My pleasure. Wait when you're back home. And when we say home, we mean Toronto, Toronto where you belong. Time. And uh, we'll do it again in person one day. Like when you sent the message here, there was not a hesitation. I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? Like you guys, um, this is, you know, something really great that you guys do. You, you, you bring, it's, it's not, it's, it is rare that you can get the inside scoop. Not okay from the head coach, but for, if you can get players on, you, you really get a sense of what's going on. It's very rare. I think in pro sports these days, but to connect with the community to, you know, take the walls down a little bit and just put it on the table, I think is important with, with humble, regular people that we're all in this together and we're all in it for the same reason. And, and um, we're there for you guys. We know that we're nothing without all of you. Like, you know, it's so honestly, right. Who are we? We're just a couple of people that, coach and, and show up at a, a field and, 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 and play, but without supporters and a fan base that bring energy and love of what we're doing. Yeah. So this is important. So for sure in person, even better. Sounds good. Well, uh, good luck on Saturday and uh, we can't wait till all of you are back home safe playing at BMO field. Cheers. my yeah. friend. Cheers. Dan, thanks, Chris. Thanks again for having me. This is, uh, yeah, I'm honored that you asked me to come on and uh, we'll do it again. Thanks. Cheers.